like I said, we want to get that variable by itself. We want to isolate it. Uh, a couple things kind of in the way of that, of m being by itself. So there's this 8 here. We don't want that 8 there. We also don't want this 3 here. Right? So we want to use the properties of multiplication, division, addition, subtraction in ways that we know are uh, permissible and you know, work our way through it step by step. Right? So there's a 3 there, there's an 8 there. We don't want either one of those. Is there a way you can think of to eliminate those? because m plus 3, if we subtract 3 from it, then we'll be rid of the 3. But if we just subtract 3, if I want to take this fraction and subtract 3, what do I need? I have a fraction here. I want to subtract a number from that fraction. That's 3 over 1. 3 over 1. Are we done? Is that it? Other side two, okay. Just to add the variable. Add the variable. Like minus minus three seven. I'm not sure what you're doing there. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, we're going to combine fraction through addition and subtraction. We always, 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 always need a common denominator. No exceptions. Absolutely not. Got to have a common denominator. Uh, so now subtracting three, if our original idea is subtract three, then we need to get a common denominator. Which we're, we're actually going to be subtracting 24 over 8, right? Because that's what three would be. We multiply this by uh, 8, we multiply this by 8, and three times 8 is 24. So we might have, we, we could then combine these. Okay, let's see what that would look like. Um, let's grab another color. This is now 24 over 8 because we got common denominators. We don't have to really don't worry about this side yet. Let's see if it's helping us on this side first. Right? The whole goal here is to get the variable by itself. Well, now we can put them together. We can take m plus 3 and subtract 24, and it's all over the common denominator 8. Now we get m minus what, 21 over 8 on this side. We haven't done anything with this side yet. Did that help us? Get us? No, we want to get rid of the 3. We want it to be eliminated. Now we just have a, a minus 21. Okay, so maybe we can run with this idea. Could, so we can see that once we had a common denominator, we could put these together, these like terms, this 3 and this negative 24, we could put them together. Well, could we tweak this a little bit? You know, make sure we have a common denominator and make sure the number we're subtracting actually does us some good. Simplify this. If we simplify this, it's going to simplify down to 3 again. Right? We're talking, if we're talking about simplifying this, that then this is a common, these two have a common factor of 8, and then 24 divided by 8. Can we subtract anything we want, though? Anything we want, as long as we do it to both sides. Okay. okay. Keep it in mind that when we do subtraction of fractions, we need to have a common denominator. <coughs> Could we do this a little differently so that when we do this subtraction, we wind up actually eliminating what we meant to eliminate? Does this have to be 24 over 8? Do I have to, does that have to be the number that I subtract? Only if my original idea was to subtract 3. Why am I allowed to put these fractions together now? After I did what I did in blue, why am I allowed to put these together? What is it that's telling me that these two can go together? Yeah, go ahead. Common denominator. Common denominator. All right, common denominator, that's the important thing. So did we change something? As long as we have a common denominator, it's gonna 
be okay. So we can not combine them by addition and subtraction. And the only reason it's 24 over 8 is because someone originally suggested subtracting the number 3. That's good because 8 divided by 8 is 1, and so we have 1 times n plus 3 over 1. And so what we're left with is just n plus 3. And on this side, we multiply by 8 on both sides. Uh, what is this? What is this? 1, this is 8. Uh, so now we have 40 over 8. 40 over 8 is 5. Okay. So just that one thing here, we just multiply by 8. Any questions? Jada? No questions. Any other any questions before we move on? I take that to mean, if you say I have no questions, I take that to mean I'm good. If I have an equation like this in the future, I'm going to multiply by, multiply by what? There's a nice, it's pretty fast, pretty easy to do that. Cancel out the denominator um, by multiplying by the denominator. That worked out great. Let's go back over here, though. Let's go back to this first idea. What I was getting at here is, <coughs> look, as long as what we're subtracting has a common denominator with this fraction, we can't combine them. And now we see the, um, I don't want to say mistake, the, uh, see that our original idea, it wasn't as helpful as we thought. But it does wind up that we can subtract something from 3. We'd like to subtract 3 from 3, wouldn't we? Are we agreed? We would like to subtract 3 from 3. So let's just work backwards here. What I want to have done was subtract 3 from that. What would this step look like if I want to subtract 3 from 3 instead of 24? She wants you to show all the steps. Don't skip yeah. the steps. All the steps? Yeah. All the steps. Well, okay, so the first step was subtract 3. And on this side, of course, we're going to subtract 3. We just we haven't really dealt with the other side yet. And now this is different. So this all is, is cohesive. So the step after this was to find a common denominator, right? To write this over 1 and find a common denominator. Multiply by 8, multiply by 8, get 8 here, 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, you got a 
time in the denominator. The idea was good. Subtract 3. I would like to subtract 3 from that 3. But it turns out just subtracting 3, it means we have to get a common denominator, and, and now we're not doing what we thought. But let's maybe not subtract 3. Realize all we need to do to, to subtract something from here is to have a common denominator. So let's make this thing. instead of a 24. There's no reason it has to be a 24. We don't have to start by subtracting the whole number. We can subtract anything we want from both sides. So instead of subtracting the number 3, let's make sure we have a common denominator. Subtract 3 eighths. Subtract 3 eighths, subtract 3 eighths. When we do that, we have a common denominator. When we go to get rid of step, we get 3 minus 3. becomes uh, m over 8. That's not bad. Maybe not the most uh, immediate idea that somebody might have. I, well, I see I have a 3 there. I'll subtract 3 eighths so that I'll wind up subtracting 3 in the numerator. Okay. So it's working out. It is canceling out that 3. Now we just need to see what happens to the other side. Okay. What do we need to combine these? Now we could multiply this by 8 to 64. You ready? Yep, you're good. Um, or we can cancel here because um, we can divide this by 8 and get 8. Divide this by 8 and get 5. Okay. 5 eighths minus 3 eighths is 2 eighths. m over 8 equals 2 over 8. Well, m over 8 equals 2 over 8. That works too. All right, so the Pythagoras stuff. Um,